Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Julia. We are two high school best friends and college roommates with an interesting dynamic. And we are here to culture each other on different aspects in pop culture. We talk about all things music, movies, musicals, Disney, and more. This is Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Welcome Hello. back. Yes, to Pop Culturing My Best Friend. The thing. So, today we are on our eighth episode, mm-hmm. and um, it's going to be a fun one. I'm excited. I so, hope so. Yeah, we <laughs> are it's kind of like a throwback kind of movie that we're doing, something that we have watched <laughs> together at least five times at this point. Um, this is our yes. movie, so we, we got lots to say. So, uh, let's get into nonsense news. Yes. Would you like to go first? Uh, Sure. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, Monday, March 29th, Mm -hmm. was the two-year birthday of Ben Platt's album, (laughs) Sing to Me Instead. Not the birthday of a person, the birthday of an album. Yeah, it's very important, okay? (laughs) Um, I'm really trying to get back into Ben Platt, Mm -hmm. so I love him, but... His music cuts deep. Anyway. But uh, with that being said, he is teasing that his next album announcement's coming soon in the coming weeks. That's exciting. And I'm very excited so I can have some new music to cry to. (gasps) Yeah. Wait, that's good. That's really good. It is good. Ooh. Okay. Awesome. (laughs) I'm. People are going to be like, why is that good that you're going to cry to music? But no, that's good. (laughs) Um, I'm excited to hear his angelic voice again. Mm -hmm. So. Awesome. That's exciting. Um some broadway news okay i have now that we know that broadway is looking to open up this fall Yay. i'm so excited um diana i saw this yes. yes okay so diana was a musical that was supposed to premiere on broadway in 2020 mm-hmm. and they only got through the previews before the rona okay which is very sad <laughs> because it's very interesting it's about princess diana from the royal family stuff like that and mm-hmm. i love her i think she's super cool and her story and stuff um but anyway while they were doing the previews they filmed one of the previews mm-hmm. you know they do that for all the shows for like promo and stuff yeah. well they filmed the entire thing and they made a deal with netflix to put it on netflix so yeah. diana on broadway will be officially coming back on broadway december 1st mm-hmm. but they're gonna put it on netflix october 1st oh cool so i'm very excited i don't know anything about the production except like what it's about so mm-hmm. i'm excited to see what they do especially because i'm like super into the royal family right now because yeah. i just finished the crown <laughs> so i am hype awesome um, and then the last piece of news is Olivia Rodrigo, Miss Driver's License herself, uh, is putting out a song on April 1st. If this is an April Fool's joke, I think I might cry. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even oh think about gosh, that. Oh my gosh, yeah. As soon as he said it, I was like, mm, are you sure? <laughs> Yikes. Um, there's so much promo, though. Yeah. Like, okay. So anyway. hopefully. So, by the way... We are recording this episode on a Wednesday because tom- this is Easter week, so we yeah. get to go home um, tomorrow, so we won't have time to film on a Thursday. So we are recording today on a Wednesday. Woohoo. Woohoo. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so um, that's all for your news. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Olivia's song next week if cool. it comes out. <laughs> now I'm scared. So um, yesterday, Tuesday, we recorded for our spring chamber concert, and hopefully that will be posted for people to listen to soon. Um, there is a streaming website for our school that we'll try to post somewhere if you guys are interested in hearing all the ensembles that I was in, um, because some of them were pretty good, and I'm excited to share. Um, I can't remember the exact the exact date that they said, but it should be sometime in the next week or two. Um, my next news story is that it's officially Bunny Day Week in Animal Crossing, and it's cursed, and I hate it. Um, if you- I still haven't met Zipper, like, on For the real? Switch. Yeah. He- I've met- I have Pocket Camp now, and I met him there, but I haven't met him, like. <laughs> yeah. You um, can't see the back of him in Pocket Camp, like, at all. Oh, okay, yeah. So, Zipper is the Animal Crossing Easter Bunny, and if you turn him around, he has a zipper on his back, and his... Identity is ambiguous, but people think it's he's Tom, Tom Nook. Nook. 
Um, 100%. Dipper is terrifying, and I hate him. And as soon as I saw him on my island, I almost cried. <laughs> also, um, Bunny Day, if you haven't experienced the phenomenon in Animal Crossing, there are eggs everywhere. In the trees, in the ground, in the rocks, in the sky, in the sea. Zipper is a disease and he must be stopped. <laughs> so. Is there a zipper vaccine? I hope so. And speaking of vaccines, my third story, tomorrow oh, I get... I didn't even know that was your yeah. third story. <laughs> what a segue. Tomorrow I get my vaccine. So, wish me luck. I'm scared. I hate needles. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. So that's, that's it. That's all I have. Yep. Awesome. All right, so let's move on. So our next segment, Walt Lily World. I have five stories today, and they aren't super interesting, but they're stories. So yeah, I don't know what any of them are this week. Yeah, there there isn't a lot of interesting news. Usually that comes later in the week, and we had to get all this ready pretty early. So this is all from earlier this week, and then a little bit from today. So. Let's start off in Epcot. Um, the Food and Wine Festival, that was canceled last year. It's going to be a taste of food and wine again, like it was this year, still because of Rona. Um, but it starts on my birthday, July 15th, so that's pretty cool. Um, I can't wait to see what the menus are, because that's always the most fun thing. you going to drink some wine, <laughs> eat some food? <laughs> Um, that's, like, always the most fun stuff is when the festivals, like, start looking at all the menus and, like, ooh, that looks good. Like, I'm never gonna go, like, during the season, because we don't go over the summer, but, like, hmm, I want some. You want some wine? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, now, I think the rest, until the last story, are in the Magic Kingdom. So, the roof of the castle is almost done, and the um, and roofs around Fantasyland are being painted for the 50th anniversary. So everything's getting a nice, vibrant blue coat of paint. Um, so everything's looking fresh. The tangled bathrooms got a fresh coat of paint. The tangled bathrooms? Yeah. What does that mean? Like, like Rapunzel. Like, tangled. They're, they're like, a tangled bathrooms? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. They're so pretty. Like, they're, like, some of the best bathrooms. Um, so it's, like, in Rapunzel's tower, and, like, it's all painted all pretty, like, outside. I'll have to show you pictures. Well, there's They're a old. bathroom at the Nashville Zoo that has monkeys in it. Nice. Like, real live monkeys. Wait, Is it like, better than that? Real, real life monkeys yes. in the bathroom. Yes. There's, like, oh, my gosh. Okay, I can't believe I'm... What? Okay, so you go in the women's bathroom in this one section of the zoo, mm -hmm. and there's, like, the glass on the wall and the monkeys are inside oh. of it they're not just roman free in a bathroom like say, what in the world no but they're cute oh that's <laughs> nice that's that's really cool it's the only reason i went in that bathroom the last mm -hmm. time i went to the zoo <laughs> okay so my next story has to do with the people mover which i miss the dearly the people mover the people mover the people mover it's a ride i wouldn't necessarily say ride in tomorrowland that's kind of above the whole like section of the park so you like get in it and you just kind of like look over the so, so is it like the dr seuss yeah. train thing so okay. it's, say, it's like that but it's lower to the ground it's not as scary and it doesn't go over water <laughs> okay <laughs> she, she we both agree that that ride is terrifying but, it's but i fun. love it like yeah <laughs> Same. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of like that. It just goes around with like an aerial view of everything, and you go through some rides, so you get to see the inside of Space Mountain. Um, you get to see uh, the Buzz you go Lightyear through ride. you go through the the restaurant on the Dr. Seuss ride. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah it's like that. So um, that's the People Mover. Um, the People Mover went down last, I think, March when COVID like happened, but it was. Because there was, like, a small, like, fire in, like, the lifts that take you... Like, not, like, elevators, but they're, like, moving sidewalks, like, on, like, a steep angle. So, that they, like, take you uh -oh. up. It's not as high, like, as you think it is. It's, like, literally, like, ceiling, like, level. Like, it's it's fine. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, like, I... Like, these, these rides are not too scary in any shape or form. Um, like, pe the People Mover is kind of, like, an icon. And um, it, it went down for refurbishment after that, and it kept getting extended and extended. So it was extended again. Um, it's been closed for over a year, um, but it's hopefully new opening is May 1st. So bring the people mover back, please, because I miss it. And I was sad that we didn't get to do it last time. And then um, 
My last story for the Magic Kingdom is that the Main Street Confectionery is closed for a very long remodel, um, which is sad because people can't smell the yummy smells of the fudge and the whatever else they make in there uh, when you're walking down the street. Because that's one of the best things. So that's like one of the best smells, I think, in the Disney parks is like the confectionery, um, water, you know, that kind of stuff. And then the, my last story that I have overall is a universal uh, news story. So Universal Studio Hollywood um, reopens April 16th. So the parks over there in California are going to start reopening. So I think I announced when Disneyland was opening uh, last episode. So yeah, I still haven't been able to find that Trisha Paytas uh, TikTok because she posts like 20 a day, <laughs> but I'm still on the lookout for it. Awesome. Because <laughs> I know it. I know it exists. I know I'm not crazy. <laughs> Because um, I think she also talked about it on a Frenemies episode, but I don't remember which one, so I've been re-watching all of them. <laughs> that's um, so that's all I have for this segment. I'm not Woo-hoo. crazy. <laughs> so that was Walt Lily World. Bing. Let us now transition <laughs> into whatever's next. Repeat, of the, week. repeat of the week. Ding. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Okay, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, cool. I hate that I've made this rule for myself that I can't do Taylor Swift every week. Oh, who that's do like, whatever you feel? Uh, I feel like people get annoyed with me talking about Taylor Swift all the time. No, so. this is our podcast, and we can talk about whatever the heck we want. And so if they like, don't want to listen, then do it. <laughs> so, like, whenever it's a week where I'm like, okay, don't talk about Taylor Swift this week, then it's a struggle to find something that I, like, want to talk about. So, this week is the song Breathe In by Ariana Grande from her Sweetener album. Okay. Um, This song, let's see, the Sweetener album was put out after the Manchester bombing incident, Mm -hmm. after her concert, and since then she has dealt with, like, mega anxiety and mm-hmm. has been very open about her struggles with that so this song is kind of about like um her struggling with anxiety and how she just gotta keep breathing you know mm-hmm. yep here's some standout lyrics um some days things just take way too much of my energy i look up and the whole room spinning uh time goes by and i can't control my mind sometimes it's hard to find Find my way up into into the clouds. Tune it out. They can be so loud. Hmm. Um, it's a catchy song. Okay. I like it. I listen to it a lot. Um, I think it's really sweet. Uh, her grandpa is, like, one of her biggest heroes in life. Mm-hmm. And uh, he died a while back. But at the beginning of the song, uh, she plays, like, a backwards message from him mm-hmm. in it. I don't remember exactly what That's it is. Cool. But I think it's sweet. So, yeah. yeah. Tis good, tis good. Awesome. Okay, so my song is related to the movie that we're talking about today because I want people to listen to this, and I want it on our Spotify playlist. Okay. Because the music and the movie that we're talking about is awesome, and it's super nostalgic, and if you've seen this movie, you will know, you know, if you know, you know. So. You know, you know. Um, should I give away the title of the movie already? Uh, yeah, they all already know from the title Fair of the enough. podcast. So we are doing Barbie and the Twelve Dancing Princesses. Borby, Bor- Borby, which is like our like favorite like childhood movie ever. So like we watch it all the time, mm-hmm. and it's a grand old time. Um, Barbie movies like especially are something that we like enjoy to watch together. I love. Borby. It's fun being nostalgic. Uh, I think one time, like, I think right before we moved in to our dorms and stuff, like, right before college started, we had, like, a play date, basically, where she came over and we played with Barbies. And oh, we yeah, got to, we like, did do that. live out our childhood one more time before <laughs> oh my gosh. we became adults. I forgot we did that. Yeah, so that was really fun. So I'm doing specifically the Garden Dance song from Barbie and the Twelve Dancing Princesses, because I know it's on Spotify. Yeah. So... I'm going to talk about it. So, um, this song, it takes place when Derek first arrived. And yes. they're like, we need some music to dance with our new shoes. And he's like, music? <laughs> <laughs> and he and plays like, this song. Please, Derek, please. So, he gets out his little recorder and he plays this song. And I love it. It's super catchy. I think its technical name um, is Argears. It's like... Um, 
I don't know how to, it's like a renaissance like, you know, that kind of music song. Yeah. Um, and it, I don't know, it's really interesting to hear, like, it played, like, as it's originally supposed to be, but mm-hmm. the Barbie version is where it's at. Um, so we have, like, I guess I connected to this song. I've played it on my flute before. It's one of your several ringtones or Yeah, the only alarms. music I have downloaded on my phone are the things that Lily sends me, <laughs> and they're, like, my ringtones and my alarms and, like, all these things. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, and we actually learned, like, the choreographed dance from the Barbie movie, and we danced Learned, learned. in quotes. We attempted. <laughs> And we did it at our little prom that we had. I feel um, like if we had more time, we could have nailed it, but... I thought it was pretty all right. It was fine. I wasn't taking it seriously. Right, so. and that's okay. Yeah. But, but it was fun for what it was. But, like, you know, if this is... Okay, so for your wedding, mm-hmm. you say you want to dance with the song. The, the theme song from the Yeah, movie so yeah. you and me are going to do a special dance at my wedding that we have planned. Yes. So, at your wedding, do you want to do the garden dance, or do you want to <gasps> slow dance with me to the theme song? Oh, my gosh. Wait, or I want to do what if we do a mashup? <laughs> we do a Glee-style mashup. Oh, my gosh. If, okay, for those of you who don't know, Julia's, like, super into planning, like, Pinterest weddings. Oh, so my gosh. Like yes. Right now. <laughs> I at least do garden dance with you, for okay. sure. Because I want to save the theme song for, like, another for dance. me. No. <laughs> um so that's garden dance um we'll have it on the spotify playlist if you you'll you'll just you'll understand when you listen to it it's a bop and should i sing it if you've so you're welcome yeah those are those are the lyrics yeah those are yeah those are the lyrics um that's all i have those are my standout lyrics for that song. <laughs> same. The exact same passage. Such a deep meaning. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know why. It took me so long to process that you were, like, being sarcastic. <laughs> I don't know. My brain is not processing things do correctly think I today. Do not have a brain? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I do. <laughs> I... It's been oh, a rough man. day. Yeah, it has. You've been up for like since like crack it on, working on stuff all day. I, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay, that's all we have for uh, review of the week. Ding. Is that what this was? Yes. Oh, okay. Ding. Hey, Lily. Hello. What musical did you choose this uh, week? I, Aida. Aida. <laughs> scared me. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> We're doing Aida. We're doing Aida. All right. Wow. Give us a synopsis. (laughs) This Elton John, Tim Rice pop opera, inspired by Verdi's classic opera, tells the story of enslaved Nubian princess Aida, who falls for captain of the guard Rodimus, who's betrothed to the Egyptian princess Amneris, who is Aida's mistress. Ooh. (laughs) That doesn't really give away a lot of what's happening. No, it doesn't. Um... Is, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, where'd you get that synopsis from? I got it from Playbill. Playbill.com <laughs> for all your theater needs. Um, let's talk about Aida. <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> There's so much to say. Aida has a special place in our <laughs> hearts. <laughs> yeah, special. Very special. <laughs> Um, so we were in Aida. Yes. Um, in sophomore, sophomore year. Yeah, sophomore the year. The spring of sophomore Takes year. Takes way back. Take See, us this back. This is like a whole other era of our lives. I it think. really so is. So when we think about it, we kind of get uncomfortable a little bit. A little, like, yikes, that happened, you know? Yeah. Like, the musical itself was a great time. It was pretty good, like, when we performed it. And, like, when I, like, watch it, it's like, oh, good time. Like, memories. But then I remember. There's so much that went on that year, just in general. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That makes Aida a little bit of a sore subject for something. I don't even remember what happened the fall of sophomore year. Like, I genuinely just remember Aida. Same. Nothing oh, wait, no, happened. it was Noises Off. Now it's coming oh, back to I me. Remember. Now it's coming back to me. Oh, so but, much. like, when I think oh. about sophomore year, it's just Aida. Not, right. like, the show itself. I enjoyed the show. I enjoyed Same. being in the yeah, show. I enjoyed too. doing it. But, like, the things surrounding. Yes. Um, the drama. <laughs> the drama. 
Yeah, the drama behind the drama. Yeah. The drama behind... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Aida, we were in it. So instead of our dream role, we're going to say who we were. Um, yeah. So, because I nowadays, we can't be in Aida anymore. And we know that. It yeah. was a high school thing. That was one opportunity to be in high, to be in Aida ever. And mm-hmm. that was it. Yeah. Um, so I was Nehebka. Well, unless we play Amneris. True. <laughs> I think I could play Amneris. You could. Amneris is a funny character. I think I could play her. Yeah. I've never thought of that before. Yeah. I've always thought of myself as like a female Zozer, but I think I yes. could play Amneris. <laughs> yeah, I guess that would make sense. Yeah. So, okay. So, again, I was Nehebka. And. Or one half of Nehebka. One half of Nehebka. Nehebka was double casted. Yes, it was interesting. Yes. Um, and then you. I was in the ensemble. Yes. I had one line. Julia was the star of the show. I was the star. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, being in the ensemble, so, like, this is such a theater kid thing. Like, it's become yeah. a meme where if you're in the ensemble, you create a backstory for your character that doesn't exist. <laughs> and I did that because when we were in Aida, I had so many things I had to do in the ensemble. Oh, yeah. Like, I was in the museum. And then Mm -hmm. I was, like, one of the slaves. And then I was a pyramid person. Minister. A minister. I was like, what are they called? I was a minister. And then I was part of Amneris' posse. And Mm -hmm. then I was part of her posse for the dinner scene. Yeah. And then I... What did I do after that? Was I a slave again? Yeah, I was. I remember. I, so I also did a lot of this stuff with her. Oh, and everything. then I was also one of the wedding people. <gasps> oh, yeah. I did so many things. You did do so many things. So I was also a minister, and I was one of um, Amneris' gal pals. Gal pals. Um, and I did a couple other things, but that was mainly, like, Nehebka minister, uh, Amneris person. <laughs> yeah but i you oh, were all over the place i was all over the place and like the thing with it is that like um there is this one section in act two mm-hmm. where i went like back to back to back to back scenes yeah. and like especially with like the minister costume there were so Ooh. many pieces to it and i w- didn't have help i, I did not have help putting any of PTSD. those costumes like, on quick change ptsd from the minister i costume. am so good with safety pins now i can safety pin anything behind me in the dark <laughs> that was so scary it was um, horrifying especially getting into our dresses for a strongest suit um mine never ever got up all the way well mine the issue with mine so the this the the dress i had was the very first dress i tried on mm-hmm. and miss burns was like okay that's it well it fit but at the same time it didn't right because i don't have the upper cleavage to hold up that dress right so it would constantly fall down and so one issue we had during a rehearsal which nobody pointed out to me i don't know why i had to find out for myself um is that um my tie in the back started falling down and you could see my entire bra for the last part of the day wait what (laughs) i don't remember yes because i remember looking down because i remember feeling it like i was as i was dancing i remember looking down and being like oh that's my bra okay (laughs) (laughs) and then i remember like multiple times like you could see you could like clearly see my bra on the back so Paige would like have to fix it while i was going off stage for those two seconds and then coming back yeah so while i was um right before i went on i had to change into that so fast because i was like pretty soon after the minister stuff Mm -hmm. so it was like getting out of all of the minister things and then going back into that and then um mckenzie who Mm -hmm. was like kind of like my quote-unquote scene partner for that Right, whole scene yeah, she yeah. was a person i stood with and like mimed with in the background she would like tighten it so hard like i wouldn't be able to breathe oh my gosh. <laughs> because like it i was so tired. scared of it falling down again yeah. but i i enjoyed the dress <laughs> it did look good on you it was cute your dress was really i looked cute. like a mess because that was a strange period of time <laughs> in my life but um, um it was a nice dress so okay. i need a like that Aida is the show where I got with Marty. So that was our, like, first, like, meeting I get. Well, not, like, our first meeting. But, like, no. that's the first time we ever, like, got to know each other. Yeah. Um, so that was 
that happened behind yeah, the scenes. So I that was kind of think... consuming my existence. Yeah, no. Um, consuming my existence was a bunch of, like, boy drama and friend drama. And mm-hmm. I... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Fame. So, me and Julia at that point were also not friends. So, yeah. that was happening. I wasn't really aware of it, but she was. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to get in yeah, no, 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 to no, no, that no. because there's a lot of... Uh, the main thing is that, like, there was a lot of things being said to me mm-hmm. that you were doing that weren't true. Right. And um, I'm a drama queen, so... <laughs> <laughs> I felt that. <laughs> because I was just very vulnerable. So, so that is our Aida experience. Yeah. Woohoo. The show itself was super fun, and I love Yeah. It. And- Especially because that's, like, the first, like full production I did in yeah, high school same. with it was the awesome. theater program. I mean, I did backstage stuff for Noises Off, but, like, mm-hmm. I wasn't doing much. I was just kind of sitting back there until scene changes. Yeah. So, yeah, I it was a great experience. So, um, what were your favorite songs? Um, my favorite songs... Let me see. Okay. Uh, The Gods Love Nubia. Mm-hmm. I love that song. Um, I Know the Truth. Obsessed mm-hmm. with that song. And Elaborate Lives. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So my favorite ones are Not Me, Dance of the Robe, and also Elaborate Lives. Um, Not me. (laughs) Not me was an interesting song. Listen, I listen to Aida. Like, it's on my Broadway Mm mixtape playlist on Spotify. But, like, that song is not on there. (laughs) There are... There are... Three songs. I can't. I can't take that song seriously. There are three songs from Aida that bring me back to the show, and specifically, it's back. not me. Another pyramid. Wait, why don't we talk about Star Kid musicals? I don't know. Well, we'll get on that later. I have a and, twisted song. Set and head, like so. Father, like Son. Oh. We, those songs in particular are like a like Father. Give like me whiplash. <laughs> they take me back. Um. Oh yes. Yes. I can feel it in your soul that as soon as I like mentioned it, I can. You guys like, I like watched her eyes glaze over. <laughs> um, I've been put into an Aida trance. <laughs> so, um, general thoughts. General thoughts. I love the show. Me too. Um, I love the work that Elton John and Tim Rice do. I love Elton John and just in general. <laughs> Um, I think it's a really good story. I love Adam Pascal <laughs> and Sherry Renee Scott. <laughs> the original so cast much. is really, really nice. Yes. I think even the version that we did. Adina Menzel played Amneris on Broadway at one point. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Even the version that we did, it was, like, really nice. Like, for, like, what, like, we were doing, I, I loved it. It was, like, yeah. like, it was, like, visually, like, really cool to look at, like, even still. Yeah. Um. Like, some of the lighting effects that we used and, like, the whole, like, box that we brought in there is out in was, like, awesome. Oh, yeah. That was so cool. Yeah. Dude. Dude. <laughs> and, like, even our costumes were, like, kind of sick. Like, Marty's, like, Anakin look was, like... I kind of really hated the minister costume, though. Not Did you really? Lie. Yes. Because it was just such a hassle. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes sense. I thought we looked Also, awesome. well, I no, I think we looked great. <laughs> uh, but just, like, me personally, I did not enjoy doing quick changes with that. Yeah, Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, every time... Okay, so in another pyramid, when we would have to, like, roll over and then get back up, I would trip every I would, time. Yeah, same. I also tripped on my costume every time. And I was... I'm I surprised think... I never fell, like, flat on my face. <laughs> I think in this time period, I was the tallest one out of all the ministers as well. Uh-huh. So when I'd, like, raise my arms or, like, any time... You was were the so... tallest and I was the roundest. <laughs> no. You can literally tell in the video which one is me because I am, like, bigger than all of you. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm the palest one as well. So anytime <laughs> oh, my yeah? arms would show, I'd just be, like, <laughs> blinded by the light. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Alexa, play Blinded by the Light by the Weekend. <laughs> Watch, it's like, it, someone's Alexa is going to go off and it's going to do that. Good. If listening to this. <laughs> okay, I think that's all we have right away. Um, musical window. Yeah, I would like to revisit this sometime with mm-hmm. our friend Melody, who played Aida. Yeah, and like um, hear her thoughts on it. Because she was kind of having her own experience, having to deal with all the, like, Aida's on stage. She was always on, skate, on stage. Mm-hmm. So she missed out on a lot of what was happening in our lives. Um, and I'd like to hear, like, her take on the show, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, yeah. We gotta talk to her. Alright, that's it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I think that's it. I don't know if I have anything else. No. <laughs>
We're back. We're back from the break. We did not announce. <laughs> We're a little distracted. Whoopsie. <laughs> yeah. So it's movie review time, and again, we're doing the Twelve Dancing Princesses, Barbie, Barbie and, and the, the Twelve, 12 Dancing, Dancing Princesses. Princesses. <laughs> Barbie. I like to pronounce her name Barbie because it, I don't know. It's don't just ask. funny. Don't ask. All right. So okay. first things first. Here's a synopsis. Yes. <laughs> Princess Genevieve and her eleven sisters discover a secret entrance to a magical world where they can dance, even though they are forbidden by their strict cousin, Duchess Rowena. <laughs> That's, That's it. Lovely. <laughs> That's it. One okay. sentence. So um, we open with like the best intro ever. Yeah, <laughs> it's my alarm in the morning. Yes, currently Julia wakes up to the Twelve Dancing Princesses intro every day, and I hear it, and it's hilarious. So um, this song it's is very awesome. startling. I want to dance to the song at my wedding. Like I have to. I yeah. love it. With um, me. <laughs> so my first note is I. You're am... not allowed to dance with Marty. You're only allowed to dance with me. <laughs> Okay. Um, so forbidden. my first note is I am obsessed with the music. I've played most of the songs on my flute, just noodling around just because they're so fun. So good, all of them. Yeah. Um Okay, so what is your first note? Um, opening song. Opening song. What's your second note? Invited. Invited. Okay. Yes. So a man comes into the kingdom. And I, what would you call this guy? He's he's inviting he's them. That guy that delivers the messages. The guy that delivers the messages. So he comes into the castle and he announces to the king that there's a ball or some kind of dance happening, and all of his twelve daughters are invited, and it's like a prestigious thing, and like a bunch of princesses. Well, he were invited. doesn't say in the letter how many there are because he's surprised by the number True. of the princesses. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> um, something he says is that the kingdom is known for past potatoes and peasants. <laughs> Love that. Um, so all the daughters start coming out, like they're all busy doing their own like like everyone has their own hobby, so all, they're all yeah. doing it. Um and like this guy is like witnessing all the chaos happen. So Lacey's hobby is being annoying. <gasps> what is her hobby? <laughs> she does uh, being annoying. She doesn't really have one. Her she? hobby is being annoying. Fair enough. Okay, so we're introduced to the twelve sisters. Yes. So we have Ashlyn, Flair, Courtney, Delia, Edeline, Fallon, Genevieve, Hadley, Isla, Janessa, Kathleen, and Lacey. We're not going to mention their names the whole time. But real quick, before we get into the the, the movie, Ow. did you have a favorite girl? Um, I identified myself with Courtney. Courtney, okay. yes, she's the blue book. The blue. She wears a yeah. blue dress and she reads a book. So, my favorite girl was Blair, um, the one in the red dress with the black hair. The horse girl. Uh, She's the horse girl, uh, (laughs) and she was my favorite. Um, All right, so we meet the girls, and this announcer guy is like, whoa, hold up, this family is wild, and then he's like, goodbye, (laughs) so he leaves. He's like, they're hardly proper princesses. They are uninvited, (laughs) goodbye. (laughs) Period. So, he leaves. And it's breakfast time. Breakfast. breakfast. Or is it lunch? Because they're having soup. I don't know. I always like consider it like a porridge kind of thing. Uh, but it could be I breakfast. thought it was lunch. Because okay. we see them at breakfast and what's her face? His head falls into the bowl and it's more like it's a different texture than what they're eating in this meal. Okay. It's more of a porridgey texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, the dad is sitting at the table, and he's waiting for all the girls to show up one by one, and they all sit down, they're like, good morning, Papa, and they're different, they eat his breakfast, because they're all like, good morning, Papa, and, like, stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are they eating them? I don't know, because the- Because it is the texture of soup. Who knows? It, it could be, like, that thing in Shrek, you know, that, like, they, they dip their fingers in, like, that's Why just was what the they cat drinking everything. it? I don't know. I don't know. My finger hurts. 
Okay. Um. <laughs> um. So they all sit down. Um. And, and guess who shows up last? Barbie. Genevieve. <laughs> Genevieve is Genevieve Barbie's played by name. Barbie. Um. In this movie. Because in the Barbie cinematic universe, <laughs> the BCU. The BCU. Um. Barbie is playing all of these characters. Yes. So Barbie plays Genevieve. Barbie plays the girl in Swan Lake. Barbie plays Rapunzel. Like, mm-hmm. all these yeah, things. Yeah, she's an actor. She's an actress. actress. So, we know this in... Uh, what's that movie called? Barbie Fashion of Fairy Tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she plays herself. Mm-hmm. And she was on set for a movie or something. And yeah. you can see, like, posters for movies in the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, um, they're having a meal. <laughs> and a meal. outside, we can see someone's arriving. <gasps> and it's... The, the royal cobbler has arrived. Yes, it's Derek, the royal cobbler. And all the girls are like, oh, he's here. He's here, he's here. And so they're like rushing out. And Papa is like, they're just shoes. And they turn around and they're like, oh, just, just shoes? Because no, these aren't just normal shoes. They're Not only are they brought shoes. by the cute, the cute dude, Derek. Oh my gosh, I love Derek. But they're <laughs> dancing shoes so he makes them all ballet slippers and they're really cute so Mm -hmm. um all the girls go outside to meet Derek and he's got them all a nice pair of shoes and Genevieve's like laughs and she's like did you bring anything for me and he pulls out her (laughs) shoes and they're special they're way burned the midnight oil for you (laughs) yeah that's uh, um they all have talking pets we'll get into that a little bit later um so Derek has a parrot um then Genevieve has a cat named Twyla, and then there's another animal that we need. Do you remember <coughs> the parrot's name? I always forget his name. Um, I have it written down somewhere. Uh, Felix. Felix! Felix. Okay, Felix. I the love parrot. him. So we'll get into the, the animal storyline in a second. But the humans can understand Felix because he's a parrot, so it makes sense that he can talk. I guess. <laughs> sure. Um, so he's like, he, he says that he burned the midnight oil for you. And Derek's like, shut up, you stupid parrot. He's just a bird. Um, yeah. And uh, the parrot brings up, you, or, or one of the girls are like, I wish we had music. No, all like, we need is some music. Yeah. And then. Music? music. <laughs> <laughs> so the parrot kind of like outs Derek as a recorder professional. He, me too. I could play hot cross buns. <laughs> So Derek's like, fine, whatever. He whips out his recorder, and they're like, please play for us. And he's like, sure. And then he plays the garden dance song, and all the girls dance around the fountain, and it's cute, and it's fun, and it's a good song. Woohoo. Yeah. Um, do you have any notes about... Uh, I love Derek so much. <laughs> like, I can't even explain. But, um... I have a Squishmallow. I think it was the first one I got. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. The first Squishmallow I got, his name is Derek. Yeah. After this Derek. So. Cute. King. Yes. Yes. All right. Absolute king. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely one of the best Barbie, like, princes. Oh, yeah. I love him, and I love the king from Princess and the Popper. Yeah. I can't remember what his name is now, but I love him. Not Julian, the other guy. Yeah, yeah, The yeah, blue yeah. guy, not the red guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he, so, oh, he's after the garden king. dance. We there's not really much that happens the rest of the day uh, besides they go back to their they room. go back to the room and they're like Genevieve's in love and she's Ooh. like no I'm not Ugh. she's got it bad and it's like so like all the sisters are teasing her and whatever and one of the younger sisters uh, which one I think it's is it Janessa. It's not Lacey because yes. Lacey's hobby is being annoying. So there there are groups that they are grouped into. Um so Janessa, Kathleen, and Lacey are the youngest triplets. So we ha- yeah. we're gonna mention them just for now on, basically, aside from Lacey as the triplets. And then Hadley and Isla are the twins. So they're the twins and the triplets, and they're the youngest sets of sisters. Yeah. And then but can I just else- say Every single one of the girls has a different colored hair. Yeah. Like, there are some girls that have similar colored hairs, mm-hmm. but, like, how? Right. Blair has I black don't... hair. Um, One of the triplets has red hair. Yeah. 
Um, the if you haven't seen this movie, the king has blonde hair and blue eyes. That's like graying. And, um, and the, the dead mom, the dead queen has brown hair and, and like green eyes. I think. I think. But she has like tanner skin. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm just saying that they have a lot of servants in the castle, <laughs> and that's all I gotta say about that. All right. <laughs> I mean, there are 12 of them. All right. So. Hey, uh, well, I'm not saying that the queen didn't give birth to all of them. I think she did. No. <laughs> no. It, you know the Duggars. They oh had gosh. 19 kids. <laughs> so, um, one of the, the triplets ha- is a bug collector because, again, they all have their own separate hobbies. And she's looking at her trays of bugs at the foot of her bed. And she's like, where's Harold? And everyone freaks out. Because yeah. they're like, is it a spider? Are we going to die? And it's a caterpillar. And they find Harold and they it's put him back. It's a caterpillar. <laughs> oh, that would sigh not... of relief. No, I would still be freaked out by that. I Same. don't like bugs. Me too. So they <laughs> go to bed. Um, that's pretty much the end of that. And then the next morning have a visitor a visitor a visitor wow who so, is it a janky carriage rolls up to this castle <laughs> and inside is the king's cousin duchess rowena and her mm-hmm. manservant desmond mm-hmm. and her monkey her monkey her horrible awful terrible cursed little fiend of a monkey brutus, brutus. <laughs> i hate him too brutus i've always hated brutus so they show up and this carriage is literally falling apart. And she's yeah. like, well, whatever. We don't need it anymore. So they are here to stay. Ooh. Uh oh. Uh oh. You can tell. She walks out. You can tell she's the villain of this movie. She just looks it. Yeah. Um, she's very wide. <laughs> she has a dump truck. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my okay. Gosh. So, um,. She welcomes herself into the castle. She stands in front of the queen's portrait. Kind of does this, like, a similar pose to her. And you can tell, yeah. like, this, this lady means business. Oh, she yeah. wants to take over. Um, so she's introduced to all of the sisters. Almost all of the almost, sisters. Yeah, almost all Somebody's sisters. missing. So the king Because that's them. her one of her only character traits in this movie. Fair enough. <laughs> So, all the girls are lined up, but there is a hole in the line, so someone is not there. And they're going down the line, and Romina is kind of like, ew. She is, like, judging all of them. Yeah. Is that mud on your skirt? I was out riding. (laughs) I could quote this entire movie. One of the sisters wants to to hold the monkey, and he's like, no, he's rare, or whatever. Um, He's very rare. (laughs) So, there's a hole in the line, and... The king, like, sees it, and he just passes on to the twins. And then all of a sudden, Genevieve, she, like, runs in. She's like, sorry, I'm late. Yeah. That's her only character trait, is that she's either late or, or that she she's dances. the leader of the group. For she's the reason. leader of the sisters, which doesn't make sense. Wouldn't the oldest be the leader of right. the sisters the and oldest, not the middle child? The oldest sister is Ashlyn, and you can tell she's the oldest because she looks different than all the other girls as well. Yeah. She has She looks older. And a different face. Yeah. Genevieve. She looks like their mom. Right. What if? No. <laughs> um... <laughs> So Ashlyn is the oldest. Genevieve is in the middle of the line, and mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I saw on the Wikipedia page that Ashlyn's around 22 years old, yeah. which is make which makes Blair about 21, Courtney 20, Delia 19, Adeline 18, Fallon um, 17. Genevieve is around 16 years old, probably. <gasps> this queen spent her entire life pregnant, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so, so sorry. Yeah, Genevieve. <laughs> We're assuming for the rest of the movie, which if this is if she has a baby every year, that Genevieve is around 16 years old. Um, yeah. So we after okay after this, um, um, the animals meet each other. So oh, Twyla minus Felix minus Felix yes Twyla is again is Genevieve's cat. And when they are not, ta- like, around humans, they talk to each other. Because in every Barbie movie, there's a talking animal. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And Brutus the monkey meets Twyla the cat, and they already hate each other. So he picks on her, and she's like, wow, you're a jerk. Um, So they hate each other already. Mm -hmm. And we move on from the animals, and we are in princess lesson number one. So Rowena is a duchess, and she's very royal i guess you would say proper proper yeah yeah so she has all of the girls put on just plain gray dresses and they all have fans and she's teaching them how to fan themselves (laughs) which i always thought was strange uh you can't like tell which one is which anymore basically Mm -hmm. because every barbie model is pretty much the same they just have different hair yeah (laughs) but like even genevieve and what's her face have the same colored hair so you like and they wear similar colors yeah so it's like who are you I you don't... can only tell genevieve by her makeup she has more makeup on um, than the other girl yeah borby deserves best i guess <laughs> right um <laughs> so um they're all fanning themselves and rowena keeps keeps calling them the wrong name um i would too <laughs> What do you have after this? Because I don't have a lot of notes about the next um, couple things until um, the this she's is playing chess with fanning her. scene. Yeah. Oh, it's bedtime. Bedtime. And uh, Rowena comes into the room and they're like, "How charming! <laughs> Clean up this mess!" And so she all like all of their hobby items are taken. Yeah. So there's basically no way to identify them ever again. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um. So, Rowena puts, like, this clock in their room, which, Mm -hmm. first of all, why didn't they have a clock in their room already? yeah. I don't know. I mean, unless one of them had it and it was just taken. (laughs) Yeah. All (laughs) the, like, I'm talking, like, they're, like, colored, like, bed sheets, like, they're, like, like, curtains, like, over their bed, everything was gone. So, everything that was remotely related to their color or anything is just nowhere to be seen. But their beds are still there. Yes. Yes. Um, um, so they're like getting ready for bed, and Genevieve is like reading a story to the little bits. And the little bits? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, and they're <laughs> like, oh, it's almost eight o'clock, and the bell starts ringing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, eight o'clock curfew? What the heck? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so they're like racing to get to their beds. Mm-hmm. And they're all in bed except for Lacey, Lacey, which, like, she can get up on her bed by herself, like, every other day. But this one day, she's, she's like, struggling. she's like, my arms are broken. <laughs> I can't climb up on my bed. So, so Genevieve, yeah. the kind soul she is, runs across the room on, like, the last two strokes of eight and puts her on her bed. And you know what Genevieve is? Late. Always late. So oh. Rowena comes in as Genevieve is like standing in the middle of the room. Yeah. And Rowena is like late again and she's like, sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so, oh, I had a question. Um, okay. So they're princesses. Right. They live in a giant castle. Yes. We see and more images of the yeah, castle. Yeah, we've seen the castle like in later shots. It's huge. Yeah. Why? Do all 12 of them sleep in the same room? It's weird. Like, have they been like that all their life? Like, the triplets are around five years old. Yeah. And they're sharing a room with Ashlyn, who's around 22. So they're yeah. all in the same room. I would die. I couldn't. So after this kerfuffle with mm-hmm. what's-her-face? <laughs> Rowena. Or yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they're like, you gotta talk to Papa about this. They'll listen to you, Genevieve, and she's like, okay, because <laughs> apparently she's the leader. I guess the so. Old. So she goes to talk to Papa, and they play chess, and they're just minding their own business. And like Genevieve's like, hey, Rowena kind of sucks. Yeah, and Rowena happens to over here and like walk by, and she's like, oh, well. I guess I'll go. You you really do need more than one person. You need tutors and all this. And she's like, I should leave. And she's being a total drama queen. And then the king's like, oh, no, 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 no. You should stay. You're doing such good work, Rowena. Because he's stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So that's kind of the end of that. Um. Yeah. 
So does does anything really happen during the day? Uh, that's about it. And yeah. then they're back in the room, and mm-hmm. she's like, "He just won't listen." Yeah. And and then they're like, "But at least tomorrow will be a good day." Right. So the next day is the triplets' birthday. So um, number five. Yes, and I think this is their fifth birthday. Yeah, I believe it is. So um, there's they a, seem a lot older than five. Yeah. Also. There's a tradition in their family where their mother gave them all books on their fifth birthday. That's, like, the story of the dancing princess. Yeah. So all of the books have, like, a specific cover for each girl. So each girl has their own flower as well. Um, so all three of the triplets are going to be given a book. And when they read the book, well, you'll see what happens. So the next day, they wake up. It's their birthday. So they sing a special little yeah. birthday song. They set up three chairs in the middle of the room and they sing today's your birthday. Yeah. You're the I would just like to say the first time you and I watched this together, mm-hmm. I made a special request that you sing me this song on my birthday. Oh. And you did not do that. I forgot. I know, but I did not forget. <laughs> Well, now I'll write it down and I'll remember next year. <laughs> I'd sing it for you on your birthday, but we don't have school during your birthday, so I guess I'll just call you. <laughs> no, please. I would love that. Okay. So um, they sing their songs and the triplets get their... Oh, actually, first, Rowena barges in the room and is like, no singing or dancing. No singing, ah. you funky fiends. Ah. Okay. So they get the books. And the triplets are, like, looking at their books. And what we haven't told you yet is that in their in the girls' room, all of the color has been stripped away except for there's, like, a little, like, thing on the ground. It's, like, a bunch of stones, like, worked into the tiles of their floor. And it's mm-hmm. really pretty. And it's, like, a circle with, like, 12 sets of flowers in it. Um, and all of the flowers happen to be what's on each sister's book. Yeah. Um, which, first of all, how have they never put that together before? I don't Second of all, oh my gosh, I'll get to that in a minute. But it's. Yeah. This I part, mean, like, low key infuriates me. Yeah, and <laughs> you'll see why uh, in just a second. So, um, they read the story, and it's a story of a the princess. Dancing princess. And she found a magical portal to a magical world where she could just dance all night, and she could only visit three times before it disappeared forever. That is the story. And yeah. we notice that I think Lacey drops her book, right? Yeah. And it she lines like, up. She's like, look. And then she like falls and it, her book scoots across the Right floor. onto her tile that matches um, her book. And they're all, like, okay. they're all like, ooh, look. And they all pull out their books and they're like, oh, I hey. found my flower too. How they never notice this. I have no Bro. idea. So then Genevieve is like, maybe this is the portal. And she starts dancing mm-hmm. on the things. So she like takes a step on the first the girl's first flower. first born flower. And it lights up and there's a sound. And they're like, oh my god. They have walked in this room so many times. So many times. I'm sure they've danced in this room. They were just dancing in this circle to sing to the triplets. What the heck? How it lit up this one time after they discovered it, I will never understand. And that's the thing, is that, like, it's not just, like, dancing on top of it. Because later, the monkey just steps on it. it Yeah, he jumps on it. Explain this, movie. Whatever. So, um, they... Genevieve dances on the whole thing. She gets to the last stone. It doesn't work. So she spins three times and then opens. Um, Wow. So really cool staircase opens up and like they walk down into this magical land and then the floor closes up above them and then they're here. They get on the boat. They're sent out uh, to this pretty pavilion and they just dance the night away. Yeah, they do. Um, Uh, Lacey scrapes her knee at one point. Mm -hmm. And they go over to a fountain to clean it up. But <gasps> this magic. is magic dancy land. Oh. So when you put the water on her scrape, it magically heals her. Yeah. It kind of like reminds me of, oh my gosh, it's been so long since I thought of this. But you know in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Yeah. Where Lucy, Lucy and Lacey, bro, <gasps> did they, t- she has that magic water stuff that Yo. like heals people. <laughs> 
wacky. I think they I think they took that from the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> um so they dance the night away and they go back up for yeah to get a, like one second of sleep, I guess. Um <laughs> and then the next morning, um uh, breakfast. 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 <laughs> Um, what's your next note? Because I don't have one for. I said breakfast, and Rowena is like, "Oh, somebody stayed up too late past the bedtime," <laughs> and then uh, this guy named Fabian mm-hmm. comes to see Rowena, but we don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Um. So the girls go and see Papa, who hasn't come to breakfast because he's not feeling well. Papa's sick. Papa All of a is sudden, sick. So they all surround his bed and they chant like like a really like like a like a choir like song over him. This yeah. man, they don't know it yet. He's on his deathbed, and all these girls are just singing the song over him. I, and I always thought it was so creepy. <laughs> so um, he seems to be enjoying it though. Yeah. So. No, they should have sang him something else. Though. Rowena comes in. She's like, "Oh, this ruckus! You guys are singing. Leave him. He's sick. Leave him be." Yeah. Rowena so, be sus yeah. and she be acting. So a doctor comes in as ordered by the kingdom to take care of their king and the doctor is terrifying looking. I've always hated him. Uh, and he <laughs> prescribes the king a medicine and Rowena's like, oh, I will see to it. I'll take care of him. Everything will be fine. The doctor leaves. Rowena <sighs> takes the medicine and dumps it on a plant. Oh my goodness. <sighs> what she is she up to? Bad. So the Rowena. girls, having been banished from their father, yeah. are outside dancing in the pavilion. Derek has brought them new shoes because mm-hmm. the night before they wore through their brand new ballet shoes by That's dancing how long all night. They dance. These girls basically didn't sleep. Yeah, um, and here they are up and just still dancing. Yeah. Um, then Genevieve she pulls Derek aside and she's like, "Yo, I saw Rowena talking to some dude." And I want to know what's up, because she's us. And Derek's like, I don't know him, but sure. So he rides away, and we don't see him for a while. Yeah. So then they go back to bed, and you know what that means. Back to dancing. They go back to the magic world (laughs) after not sleeping, and they do it all over again. They've been up for over 24 hours, pretty much. They should be dead. Yeah. (laughs) And not only the fact that they've been up for 24 hours, because I've done that before, Mm -hmm. but the fact that they've been, like, exhausting themselves by dancing for the majority of the 24 hours. Mm -hmm. What? (laughs) So they're all dancing ballet and they're making fun of Rowena and they're having a grand old time. Their leggies be skinny. Yeah, they're really skinny. They are like... I think uh, this is the point where they ask, uh, I wish we had Uh, ballet dresses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then the flowers, um, they open up and let out some magic, and then boom, they have dresses. So the flowers in this land, as well as the water, are magic. Everything is magic. Mm -hmm. So we cut to Derek, and he sees this shady-looking guy in the distance, and and he's following him. Um, And the guy notices Derek, and he starts, like, running on his horse. So they have a horse chase for a hot second, and then eventually uh, Derek gets him to stop. And this is Fabian. Um, he's we find out he's an apothecary um, who yeah. sold Rowena an unknown sub uh, an, an unknown um, substance in exchange for the girl's mother's silver goblet. <gasps> the goblet of fire. <laughs> Harry, did you put your name in the goblet of fire? Dumbledore said calmly. <laughs> Um, so I just spit all over everywhere. my phone. <laughs> On me too. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, so Rowena's stealing from their mother's things mm-hmm. to afford something from an apothecary, which could yeah. mean all sorts of things. Yeah. Um. Uh. So the girls go back to their bedrooms mm-hmm. and they're like, good night. And then um, like an Rowena <laughs> storms in and is like, alright, you selfish little brats. Good um, morning. Where did you go last night? And Why are you so tired? And the stupid monkey mm-hmm. goes mm-hmm. underneath her bed and pulls out their new dancing shoes that have been worn through again. Why can't they just ask for new dancing shoes in the magic land? 
Yeah. Like when their shoes get worn through. That's. Mm. Or ask or put them in the dresses. water. Yeah. Put them in the water. They got new dresses. Make them new. Why couldn't they have new shoes? Well, whatever. Um, what do you have next? Because I don't have something. Um, for Rowena bit. makes them clean up the entire castle because mm-hmm. they suck. Yeah, they're lying to her. They said that they were in a magical land, and that's not true because my servants been blocking the door all night. They couldn't have escaped. Yeah. Although their room is surrounded by like a glass window kind of mm-hmm. like at least half of their room and there's like french doors there yeah so they could just easily just like walk out yeah hmm. so why doesn't she have Stupid why desmond. didn't she have desmond guard that because then he can see in when oh they're going gosh. into the magic land well that's a great question or the monkey. The monkey would have watched. Well, the stupid monkey. He just sees him from through the window anyways. But, like, ugh. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, so they're, like, cleaning up the garden, and they're picking up leaves, and ugh, they're almost done, and mm-hmm. freaking lacy. Lacy. Uh, ruins it all for everybody, and she makes a mess of the leaves again. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, so Genevieve goes over and has a talk with Lacey, Mm -hmm. and Lacey's like, I'm not good at anything, and I'm like, yep. And (laughs) Genevieve is like, you'll find out what you're good for something. Yeah. And I'm just like, nope. Um, Let's see. Okay, so then the next night, uh, Rowena locks them in, and they're like, um, they heard their father, somebody... Something happened, and there was miscommunication, and they think their father thinks that they're a burden on him. Right, right. So then they're like, whatever, we're going to the magical land. Like, Forever. Like, they're not coming back. Yeah. And they, like, this is the third day, so this is the last time they can go into Mm -hmm. the magical land. Um, And they don't come back the next morning. So everyone's like, oh, the princesses are missing. Yeah. So Derek comes back to the castle, and he's like, he's like, hey, I'm here to see Genevieve that you know that hot babe Mm -hmm. um and they're like don't you know the princesses are missing they've run away and then desmond's like we don't need you today cobbler or whatever i would love a cobbler right now like not a shoe cobbler but like a peach cobbler yeah yummy Mm -hmm. um yeah so So derek is like "Mm, i don't know about that chief so he breaks in he breaks in at night he climbs up to the balcony and goes in the french doors i was just talking about Mm -hmm. and he notices his shoe polish on the floor and he's like only in like specific place it's only on the stones like of the flowers not in the rest of their yeah i walk well felix is like well duh surprise she walked in her room yeah (laughs) But for some reason, he can only, like, see it's on, like, the flowers. And he's like, oh, the dance that she the was doing dance. in the pavilion. Ooh. Uh, so Derek starts to do the dance. He has good form. Just want to <laughs> say. So Derek's doing the dance. And what he doesn't know is that Br- Brutus has noticed. And Brutus is like, hey, I'm going to watch that. And, um... Derek goes out into the ma- magical land, and he meets Genevieve there, and they, they were already dancing. They had a little dance number, and Derek's like, yo, that guy, he was, he, he's up to no good. He had one of your mother's um, goblets because Rowena gave it to him in exchange for some unknown substance, and Genevieve's like, what was he doing with that? Why is she stealing mother's things? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, Not again. Oh, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so, while this is going on... Um, Brutus brings Rowena and Desmond into the room. And yeah. he's like... Brutus is, like, trying to jump on the things, trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you stupid monkey. What are you doing? And then he finally, like, steps on the right one and it glows. And Brutus does... I wanted to see Brutus spin. Like, yeah. I wanted to see his whole dance. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so they end up getting in, and Rowena is like, um, those brats weren't lying to me. Yeah. What on earth? So she's trying to see them with her little monocle. She's like, well, I wish I had a, 
I wish I could see them better or whatever. And the flowers open up and she discovers the wishing power of the flower. So she orders Brutus to grab her a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, so Rowena is like, okay, I got the power. And she leaves. And she has Desmond smash the stones in their room to trap the girls in there forever or whatever. Yep. Um, so while they're just chilling in the magic land, they've realized that they can't get out. Um, we go up to the queen. Uh, not the, the, the king. <laughs> the king. And the king, the king is like, oh, cousin, thank He's... you for all your help. And she's like, I only wish I could do more. I'm like, well, would you like to reign in my absence? And she's like, well, the people wouldn't listen to me unless I was queen. Then he <laughs> makes her queen. So Rowena is officially the queen of the kingdom. Whoa. So after Rowena is declared the queen, mm-hmm. um, she orders the guards to watch for the princesses because they're traitors. Yeah, and they'll be banished to the dungeon if they come back. Yeah. So, meanwhile, in the magical world, um, Genevieve is trying to figure out, like, how they can get out, and she sees that there's, like, a circle on the ground just, like, in their room. So she tries to dance on it by herself. Nothing happens. And Derek's like, let me try. Let me try. Because he's a dude and he's got to do it first. So he tries and it doesn't work. And, like, they're both, like, frustrated and they do it at the same time. And it they have to dance together. How romantic. How? Okay. So Derek broke into the castle and he just guessed how to get in. Yeah. If he didn't. If he wasn't asked to do that by Genevieve, he wouldn't have been there. How else would they have escaped? Would it have worked with another sister? Uh. I don't know. <laughs> how, how did the magic land know he was coming? Um, so weird. Lucky guess. <laughs> so, um, they dance together, and it's, like, a really nice scene. It's a, it's a theme song, and it's so pretty, and, like, they all start, like, flying into the air, and just, like, out, and out of the portal, um, and, like, the sisters all, like, fly, like, underneath them, and it's, like, a pretty spiral of dancing, <coughs> and they come out at the pavilion outside of the castle, because the one in their room is gone, and that was the last time they ever got to go there. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then they're like, we gotta go save Papa. Mm-hmm. But the guards are after them. Yes. So, Princess yeah. breaking into castle hijinks. <laughs> yes. They all bring out their special skill, and they all find a way in the castle. So, once they're in there, they get Desmond trapped in a, like, room in the cellar, and they lock him in. And then Genevieve and Derek make it up to where Rowena is in Papa's room. Um, and Rowena is like, haha, how'd you get in here? But guess what? You're gonna die. And she takes her flower that um, Brutus grabbed her and she puts a spell on the suits of armor like, that you'd see in a castle. And she makes mm-hmm. them come alive to protect her. But they're like easily defeated. So. Yeah. There were some pretty close calls, though. Like, they almost killed them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Desmond breaks through the door in one clean sweep, somehow. And sees Lacey. Yes. So, he runs for Lacey, and the animals have a little interaction. They do. So, um, Twyla and, um, Felix end up scaring off Brutus. Uh Uh-huh. Um... So, Genevieve and Derek beat the armor, and Rowena pulls out her flower, and she wishes that Genevieve would dance forever and ever and and ever and never, ever stop. Well, Genevieve pulls out her fan Mm -hmm. from literally nowhere and flutters the magic away from her. Right back at Rowena. (laughs) And Rowena. I don't don't know. So Rowena gets caught in the spell and she starts dancing and she's like, Desmond, help me. And Desmond grabs her hand to help her. And the magic goes over him too. So they are stuck dancing together. That would be awful. And Desmond, he's happy about it too. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, okay. (laughs) Um, So they look over. Uh, It's just Genevieve and Derek in the room and Lacey runs in. And Papa is dead. 
He's dead. Oh no. So they're all sad. And Lacey crawls up and she's like, uh, don't worry, Papa, I can help you. And she takes out a bottle of water from the magic water and she pours it in his teeth. You know yeah, what I'm talking she, about. Yeah. <laughs> she stole water from the magic land. Mm-hmm. Um, which, okay, so Lacey can take the water. Rowena can take the flowers. Mm-hmm. Did the girls take their costumes? Their dresses? That's what I was wondering as well. I th- I think they did. that's what they wore for this scene. Yeah, they're in but before that, they were wearing... The, they the came second back night... Gowns. Yeah. Hmm. So Weird. what happened? I don't know. Also... I'm just really confused. Anyway, so the king um, is alive, did. And he's like, this is great. I'm alive. Mm-hmm. And then we cut to a new day, yes. a new dawn. So it is a wedding. Genevieve a is wedding. getting married to Derek. And These we... two 16 year olds. Yes, they. I think we also saw on the same page that Derek was also about 16 years old. They're getting he married before. Look like it. They're getting married before the 22 year old. Yeah, which is weird. So uh, it's their wedding. Uh, Blair, the horse girl, is um, in charge of the horse, and all the sisters are in this mega carriage. Um, and Lacey is, I guess, the main flower girl for some reason. Uh, and they pull up to the wedding, and no one's there. Yeah, nobody's there. Like, there's nobody in attendance. You would think that, oh, this is the king of, like, a kingdom. Mm-hmm. So this would be, like, a big deal that one of the princesses is finally getting married. Yeah. But, like, nobody's there. Yeah. Weird. Um, And they, Genevieve and Derek, have a little dance. And that is basically it. Yep. Do you have any more? things to add i don't think so okay i like this movie a lot yeah i have a lot of complaints about it but like i love it yeah same i agree (laughs) kind of like mm, i have i have a lot of complaints about um the toby Maguire spider-man movies Mm -hmm. um but they're also they were also like a big part of like my childhood like movies that like kind of defined it um so i still love it Mm -hmm. but (laughs) They annoy the heck out of me. (laughs) So, Um, that's also all I have as well. Yeah. Good times, good times. Yeah, good times. Um, We're going to take a break, and I'm going to say we're going to take a break this time. And (laughs) we'll be back. Yep. That's all I got to (laughs) say. We are back. Yes. And we are here to say, welcome to the game. <laughs> welcome to the game. Do you have a name for this game? No. Cool. So this is another game that Julian make up, made, made up, like the aesthetic one. And this one's really, like, this is going to be another fun one I'm really excited about. Um, yeah. So I like to dreamcast, mm-hmm. um, specifically my friends and things. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of doing that, but just for you and me. So we have to cast each other as a character within these either movie series or um, TV shows. Yeah. So. Cool. Yes. Uh, the first one is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay. Which um, I know little to nothing about. Which so. is sad. This is all going to be kind of a guess. Sad. <laughs> Um, okay, so for you, I was thinking either, oh, shoot, what's her name? I don't even remember her name now. So now I have to pick a different one. So, um, I'm thinking Scarlet Witch. Okay. Yeah. Because, like, when I think about it, I think about her relationship with Vision, and, like, I'm like, oh you and marty um Mm -hmm. yeah okay (laughs) cool i don't know how else to explain that so but i had another character in mind but i can't remember her name all right 
I guess I'll just um, die. So, I don't really know the characters well, but I think... I know you like Captain America. <laughs> uh, so that's literally all I think I can say. Because okay. I don't know anything about, like... This is very sad. Yeah. But I don't really... I'm not into that kind of stuff, like superheroes. Like, sad. it's just, like, fighting and dudes in, like, spandex. I'm, nah. Hot dudes in spandex? <laughs> nah. Not my thing. Um, Bro, it's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about dudes in spandex? No, I've been <laughs> hot, like, this entire time. Like, it was freezing earlier, mm-hmm. and I'm hot. Alright, what's our next category? Um, a lead Barbie character okay. in a Barbie movie. Cool. Yeah. Would you like me to go first? Yeah, Okay, sure. so I think that you would be a really good Erica from Princess and the Pauper, because yes. Because I have brown hair. No, not because you have brown hair. Oh my gosh. You could be a blonde Barbie if you wanted to. But I just Erica's character arc, okay? You you get it. Erica's cool. Yeah? Yeah. What does that have to do with me? You're cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd be a very good Erica. Okay. Um so me and my brown hair think that <laughs> that you would be Barbie as Rapunzel. Oh. Because she's artsy fartsy. Okay. Interesting. And so are you. So. Nice. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, the next category is The Office. Okay. I have a fun one. Okay. You already know who I think you are. I do? Yeah. I don't think I am. Because I told you like all the time while we were watching Thank it. You. Okay, I think Lily is Angela. Never mind, I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I, uh, like, so you look very similar to your mom. Like, yeah, extremely similar. And I think your mom looks a lot like Angela. Just okay. she's taller than Angela. <laughs> she's tiny. <laughs> and also, I think Marty is, like, 100% Dwight. 100%. 100%. Like, 1,000%. There is no one better. So, if Marty's Dwight, you have to be Angela. Right. Correct. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I was thinking, um, I think that you'd be Jim. Jim? Because he's, like, sarcastic <laughs> and, like, you know, his, like, look. Okay. That's something that I feel like is a very you thing. Also, the fact that you, like, prank Marty just anyways would be I so prank fun. Marty? No, but like if you would would be oh, so okay. Funny. So. I was like, what's a prank I've done on Marty? Oh gosh, <laughs> never. But I I can't I'm not good at pranks. I'm hilarious. <laughs> I'm big bad. Okay. Uh the next category is Franz. Franz. Friends. Friends. Yeah. Um okay. So, you went first last, last time. Yeah. I think you'd be Chandler for the same reasons Obviously. as Jim because he's, like, sarcastic <laughs> and he's, like, the funny one. I, I love Chandler. Very much you. Chandler's my favorite character in general. <laughs> yeah. I think that was yeah. a very you thing. Um, I think you're Rachel. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not bad. <laughs> I'm not saying she's bad. <laughs> Just, like... I think you're Rachel. Yeah, okay, I see what you mean. You're right. Yeah, you're <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> you're Fair not enough. outlandish enough for to be a Phoebe. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not that out there. I yeah. as much as I feel like I am in my own head. And I'm more I'm like more if I'm any of the girls, I'm right. more of a Monica. Yeah, you're a Monica so. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, so you're Rachel. Mm-hmm. Okay, next one is Hello Kitty. Yes. Now, this one was kind of difficult for me. I don't know all the Hello Kitty characters, so this fine. was kind of a guess for me, because I, like, don't know. That's okay. Like, I don't know MCU, you don't know, and that's okay. Yeah. So, this one, at first, I was going to say you're Kurumi, and that is... Who is that? My Melodies, of, like, anti, like, version, you know. The, oh, yeah, yeah, her, yeah. Um... But Kuromi, her whole character thing is that she's, like, dark on the outside and she, like, looks edgy. But actually, she's a girly girl on the inside. She loves, like, romance novels and, like, pink and, like, that kind of stuff. So, I kind of love that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who is this girl? 
So it, I think, I mean, Karomi is also my melody is like rival. They're like oh. frenemies, but like, like Trisha and Ethan. Yeah, they're kind of, like, like, they're pretty much besties, but, like, Kurumi's, like, always, like, being, like, kind of mean to her or whatever, uh-huh. you know. Um, so I was tied between that and, um, I don't, you won't know him by name, like, the, like, the black penguin guy. Um, yeah. Yeah, him, um, Batsmaru. I think that you're also very him, because he's, like, I don't know he, how to describe him. He's very, like, a funny kind of, like... Not like mean character, but like he he's like the I don't know the 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 good word like a word for it, but he's kind of like a prankster, like jokester kind of character. But like he he's cool, so I feel like okay. he's he's definitely the most like tame of the group. Oh, out okay. of all of them, and I don't think he'd be like super girly, like uh, my melody or like Hello Kitty, or as like tomboyish as Kiropi. Okay. Or um, as like lazy and hungry as Kieran. So, ow! <laughs> I think you're you're stuck between them for sure. Okay, um, I think you're um from the only ones I know their names. Um, my melody. Okay, yeah, that yeah. makes sense if you're Karomi as well. But <laughs> yeah, that's kind of our vibe, anyways. I like that. Like that. That's cute. Cool. Yeah. The next one is My Little Pony. Which is an interesting category, how you came up with this one. You were talking about My Little Pony. Yes. So, so we, I was doing some background research while we were watching um, Barbie and the Top Dancing Princesses, and I was looking at the list of the voice actors, and I clicked on all of the names of, like, basically all of the female cast, except for Rowena, I'm pretty sure. Every single one of them played a role in My Little Pony. One of them played two of the main characters as well, mm-hmm. which I didn't realize until I, like, was, like heard it and then I could hear it in her voice. So that was really interesting that all of them were in the cast of the show. Yeah. That was cool. So that's what I was talking about earlier. It's like, yo, all of these people were in the same show together. Yeah. Um, so then she added it to this list. All right. So... I went first last time, so it just you your turn. Okay. I think you are a rarity. Really? Yeah. Oh, I was I, I was not expecting that. Really? Yeah. I was expecting more of like a pinky, like kind of. Well, deal. see, that was my original mm-hmm. thing, but then I was like, no, because your personality more lines up with rarity. rarity. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, this one was also difficult for me. I think that you have aspects of a couple of characters i think you are in line with like a rainbow dash but less of the sporty side more of her like um comedic kind of like rougher side than the other girls mm-hmm. but you also have aspects of fluttershy and twilight i think because twilight's like the book smart like always reading um <laughs> You're not stupid, as much as you want to think you are. You're not. Um, And Fluttershy is, like, caring and quiet, and I think that's things that you have as well. I'm just a whole kerfuffle of ponies. (laughs) That's going in my quotes. I'm a whole kerfuffle of of ponies. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Okay, that's all of the... um, thingies i have the yeah. topics unless you can come up with another one on the spot um hmm. i don't think i have anything oh, okay well there you have it that was game um <laughs> we don't have any questions or shout outs this week because i again we're recording at a weird time in the week mm-hmm. so there wasn't really time time i mean we like basically just figured out when to record it today yeah uh so yeah but shout out to everybody who listens congrats yes congrats (laughs) you guys are all cool um i'm gonna start the thing again where if you listen and you share the podcast on social media and you tag us in it Uh, We're going to give you a shout out because we haven't done that in a while. Yeah. So I'd like to start that again because I would like you to share it. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
uh, next week. I don't think we have any plans next week yet. Not not quite yet. No, nope. it's, it's a little early for that. We're, again, <laughs> everything's pushed back. Um, I have a couple of ideas. I was mm-hmm. gonna run by you. I don't know if any of them will take, but oh. it'll right. be interesting. I think that's all we have for today. Yes, thank you for thank you. joining us. Make sure to go follow our Instagram at popculturingmybff underscore podcast uh, for updates. And also we post um, the day the podcast comes out. We post references to things we talked about. And um, if you miss it that day, you can always just go to our page, look at our bubble of season one, and all of them from every episode will be there. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's all I have. That's it. Yeah. Stay tuned. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us this week on Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Tune in next time when we talk about more stuff and things. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram at popculturingmybff underscore podcast for behind the scenes content and more. Thank you.